welcome to uh, what I believe is going to be the biggest Raptor video that we've done so far. And this is going to be probably a pretty long one, but it's going to be the entire cooling system replacement on my 2011 F-150 Raptor. This truck's got 155,000 miles or so on it, and all of the cooling system except for the upper radiator hose is original. And at this kind of mileage, and not knowing 100% what kind of service the cooling system had in the past, what kind of corrosion there might be, um, and also knowing that I have a coolant leak somewhere, I'm taking the nuclear approach and replacing everything in the cooling system. So um, what I'm going to do is have this video be the overall cooling system replacement video. If you want to see how to replace every little bit and piece, I'm going to show that in this video. I've got upper and lower radiator hoses, heater hoses, coolant overflow tank, um, cap, different bolts that I'm going to be replacing, thermostat, radiator cap right there. Over to the side here, I have all the various different pulleys on the front end of the engine since we're going to have to pull off the belt to do the water pump. I have the water pump itself. All genuine Ford parts, genuine Ford belts, everything. Um, like I said, this is going to be a full replacement. And, and of course, I've got some Ford Motorcraft yellow coolant, which is uh, what I've been told by the dealership and by multiple people that correct coolant for these trucks uh, now as of 2022. So this video is going to be the, the whole shebang. And what I'm going to do is <clears throat> basically take chunks of this video and form the, uh, separate videos for each kind of subsystem. So how to replace your radiator hoses, how to replace your radiator itself, which not on the workbench, but that's over to the side, very large radiator. How to do that, how to do heater hoses, how to do just your coolant overflow tank, do a thermostat, do a, a radiator cap. I don't know if I'll go into that kind of depth for a radiator cap because that's pretty easy, but um, if you're watching this video when it comes out, expect those other individual videos. Um, if you're interested in only a small portion, only want to watch a short video, over probably the next few months after this video is released. If you're watching this video, you know, a year after it's come out, all of those videos have probably come out at that point. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of walk over to the truck, give you uh, a view of how the truck sits right this second and some of the initial things I'm going to do. And then we're going to start doing those things and tearing into the truck from there. So I'm going to go ahead, head over to the truck and see what we have. All right, so here's the current state of the Raptor. I have everything kind of protected. I just had the whole front clip of this truck repainted, so I want to make sure I can protect it as best as possible. I have some old microfiber bath towels that I like to clip on the front end of all my vehicles. Clip them on wherever you can. Make sure that they're clean when you're clipping them on. Protects the paint really well. Um, I've had fender covers and stuff in the past, and they scratch up. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is cooling system. So what we're going to be doing in here is everything. Now, you can see little bits of evidence here, here, and actually a little bit on the the um, hood insulation that we had a coolant explosion at one point. I know that that was the upper radiator hose. I know the original owner of this truck. He had this pop on him at some point. Doesn't have OEM clamps on it. I have, again, all of those parts are going to get replaced. All OEM stuff everywhere. Um, so had a cooling system issue in the past. To my knowledge, wasn't overheated, at least not severely. Um, so it shouldn't have any issues with the engine itself. But 155,000 miles, everything's getting replaced. So what we're going to do is... Before we replace anything, I know this truck has a, a cooling system leak somewhere. I'm going to take a cooling system pressure tester and see if I can find that leak, just so I know where it is. Um, I want to have a basis for where that leak is, so I know where the, the coolant leak or consumption is coming from. Um, obviously, if a leak doesn't show up, then there may be actually a consumption issue with the engine. I'll look into that more at that point. But no matter what, all the cooling system needs to get replaced. It's old, it's tired, a lot of plastic parts, a lot of brittle stuff, a lot of rubber. Um, I live in Arizona where everything dry rots, so not a good situation for rubbers and plastics. So, like I said, everything's going to get replaced. Now, this truck, I can't get a very good view of it because it is a pretty uh, long truck and it takes up a lot of my garage. It has an off-road, uh, ADD off-road bumper on it. I'm going to end up, I think, taking off the skid plate and then taking off this uh, kind of wind fairing right here. I have new ones of those as well that I'll probably be putting back on. Uh, once I finish up the cooling system installation. So I'm going to be taking that stuff off, and then I have direct access to the front of the engine from there. There's there's nothing else barring you uh, through that area other than this and then the, the skid plate on the bumper. I'll have to work around the tubes of the bumper that hold the skid plate, obviously, but I should be able to get direct access to the front of the engine, be able to get the lower radiator hose off, which I've heard is a pain, um, get that off pretty easily, and uh, go through that process as well with, with a fair bit of ease compared to normal. Um, so that's kind of the, the game plan. Everything's getting replaced. Going to be, first of all, pressure testing through here, which I'll show the process of, um, at least in, in some detail in this part of the video. And then uh, I'm going to start 
tearing everything apart and, and replacing parts from there. I think what we're gonna end up doing is pulling all the hoses out um, that are attached to the radiator, getting that radiator replacement done because that's the most invasive part of this. Um, probably getting the water pump done while the radiator's out and then uh, doing everything else from there. And of course, we gotta drain coolant before we do anything else. So um, with that, gonna move on to pressure testing and we'll see where we get from there. All right, so here's the coolant testing setup right here. Um, I have the little correct cap adapter for the Raptor on here. The OEM cap is a 20 PSI cap, so I pressurized the system to the 20 PSI range on here. And it's been sitting for a few minutes now. If it's leaked down at all, it's leaked down just a tiny bit, um, which is good. That means I have very little to no, no leakage out of the cooling system right now. That said, as I was pressurizing at about 10 PSI or so, I got a pretty good leak out from oops, here. Um, it's going to be difficult to see, but maybe you can see some wetness in there. You can definitely see some wetness uh, right down in there, right underneath where that bushing is. It's hard to see because it's out of focus. And you can see some wetness right there. So uh, that upper uh, radiator hose, radiator inlet, the upper radiator hose inlet uh, was leaking and at about 15 PSI I started getting coolant absolutely pouring out uh, from the water neck right there and again the camera doesn't want to focus very well but you can probably see it's pretty wet down in there um, and the coolant actually is running towards the back of the engine so what I thought might be a valve cover leak because I thought I might have a valve cover leak on this side um, turned out to be more than likely just that coolant leak right there. So with a 20 PSI cap and the cooling system leaking from the upper hose, pressurizing uh, at 10, 15 PSI at the, the leak points, that's almost certainly where my coolant loss issue is coming from. It's just slowly but surely piddling out over time and, and that's where the, the coolant's going. Um, especially with how stable this is holding. I mean, again, we've been shooting video now for a couple minutes talking about this hasn't moved i think we're going to be good to go so uh any thought that i had of head gasket being potentially compromised or anything like that from overheating it's pretty darn alleviated at this point um and we're going to go ahead and proceed with the rest of the cooling system change so i'm going to go ahead and leave this here just for a little bit longer just probably a, a 10 minute total time period just to make sure it doesn't leak down over 10 minutes or anything like that um but i think it's safe to say that it's time to start tearing into this thing at this point, we have the coolant pressure tester off of the truck. Um, no problem pulling it off there. You just have to push the release valve on the one that I have and let all the pressure out and take it off. I clean it up and everything and put it away. And now we're ready to start taking coolant out of the system. So I'm on the passenger side of the truck. This is the outside of the frame rail. So, I mean, if we look up over here, we got our spring and uh, Fox shock right there. And the radiator drain valve or petcock is right there. It's that red one right there. And all I did was take a big piece of uh, half inch OD, three eighths inch ID tubing, stuck it over the nipple that's on there. And I'm gonna be able to get up in there. It looks like it takes a flat blade screwdriver, just a big old standard flat blade, or with the knurling on the outside, might be able to turn it with your fingers. But gonna go ahead and pop that guy loose and let the uh, coolant come out this drain tube, probably into just a five gallon bucket under here. Um, I don't know how much coolant capacity this truck has, but I think it's a pretty decent amount. And I don't know that I have a drain pan big enough. One thing I want to mention too, while we're under here, you can see if you have an upper radiator hose leak, kind of where it would run. Um, mine started running all down the frame rail here. And then if we look up uh, up in there, you can see kind of some of the areas where it's it's still wet from it dumping out that coolant during the pressure test. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this sucker loose and we'll uh, drain all the coolant out and go from there. We got the uh, coolant drained out of the radiator petcock and that drained out a decent amount of coolant, but uh, looking around and everything, I'm seeing now that that's not the lowest part of the cooling system, actually. This part is the part that goes into the oil filter housing that has a little oil cooler and everything built in, kind of. Um, so I still have actually a pretty good amount of coolant left in the system. And I'm going to, what I want to do is pop off uh, one of those hoses to drain that coolant out, at least as best as I can. So I'm not entirely sure how Ford's quick disconnects here work. I haven't worked with these in the past before. But it looks like we just have uh, a couple tabs, one right there, just on the very end of the hose, and then there's one 180 degrees on the other side. And it, it seems to me like you just squeeze those tabs and the hose pops off. 
I'm looking at the new hose that I have, that seems to be how they function. Um, so I'm gonna give it a whirl, try to get these things off, and um, I'm sure I'm gonna do at least the first one off camera. I might be able to do one on camera after that, but I'm gonna have to fiddle with this and play play with it and figure it out. Um, so and, and once I figure it out, I will I'll show you how to do it as best I can again. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that and get the rest of the coolant drained out and then we're ready to start tearing stuff apart. Well, we finally got off the uh, little oil filter housing coolant lines. Those were a real pain. Um, this is why I don't understand why people use quick disconnects as opposed to just clamps, but it is what it is. Uh, the way I got one of the hoses off was pretty easy, actually. I just squoze the uh, little squeeze clamp guy, which is still on the uh, the nipples on the housing right there. But I was just able to squeeze that really tight and pull the hose right off. And it leaves the little clamp on there, but you're able to pull the hose off. And you can see that's this, this upper hose right here. And I just plugged it off with paper towel and plugged off the cooler port with paper towel so I wouldn't... Uh, drip any coolant all over myself while I continued working. Now the lower one I tried to start with didn't work out to start with, so I ended up coming back to it. That one I could not get the squeeze clamp to work, I think because uh, there's a bunch of debris built up since the oil filter, whenever it drains, can and will drain right onto this uh, right onto this line right here. So I think it builds up some, some gunk back behind the uh, little release guy right there and it makes it so you can't squeeze it. So I tried to take a pick in there and clean it all out, and I got a bunch of stuff out, but it still wasn't enough for me to squeeze the clamp. I also think those plastics probably cook over time too, and you know that doesn't help with pliability either. So what I ended up doing was, hopefully you can see, broke off the uh, little part of the hose in here that slips over the tab on the retainer and uh, clamps it into place. I'll show you that. Uh, in a separate clip here in a minute, but that's how I was able to get it off. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to do that if you're not going to replace your hose because that's all that holds your hose into place once it's under pressure. But uh, that's that's how that that's how I got that off. I ended up just breaking it off. Didn't harm the housing or anything. I do want to mention the sealing surface for the housing is further down from the clamp, so there's a little hump on this housing, and I can't really get a good shot of it, unfortunately. So. It's going to be kind of hard to see unless you can see it on camera right now. There's a hump on the housing. Anything from the hump down to this port right here, you want to make sure stays scratch free and clean. That's where the O-rings inside these quick disconnects seat and seal. So you just want to make sure that that's really nice and clean. Um, on the uh, on the other side is where we're, we're where where we were prying. Um, we I pried basically uh, got a little flat blade screwdriver in there. Stuck it into, in between the white release piece right here and then the black quick disconnect and just pried up and out and just broke that piece off. So that's how I was able to get it out. Once I got both of those broken, I was able to just pull the hose right off because there's nothing holding it on. And again, I'll show you that here in just a second. But now we have all the coolant out of the truck. So I think what I'm going to do next is start pulling radiator hoses and kind of move forward from there. All right, so we've taken a couple week intermission from this project and we're coming back now um, after spending a little bit of last week and getting one end of the lower radiator hose off. That was a pretty pretty decent struggle to get it off. So the last thing that we left off with was getting these uh, oil cooler lines off. Pain in the butt, but not too bad. This was pretty terrible. Um, the, there's a, on this end of the hose, a spring clamp. And unfortunately, the way that this is set up on the, the Raptor, the oil filter slash cooler housing is in the way of accessing this from the front. You have the head and the exhaust manifold in the way from the top, and then you have the differential and steering rack in the way from the bottom. So unless you're going to pull, uh, the best way if you're going to remove stuff, I think, would be to pull the steering rack and or front axle out, um, which, would, which would be a horrible pain. There's really no good way to access it, and it's just going to be a struggle. So what I ended up having to do was, and, and I think this is a must for you to get if you're going to pull the lower hose off, was to get a pair of these pliers. These are Aries part number 71100. Um, and it's basically a set of locking hose clamp pliers. So these ratchet and have on this end the uh, mechanism to pinch the squeeze style spring hose clamps. So if you watch as I close the pliers, it closes the end of the, uh, the pliers uh, on the other end. So it's cable driven. These work really well. And 
with a little bit of finagling, you can get the, uh, the end over here onto the spring clamp without too much of a problem. That said, that spring clamp is really, really strong. And while you might be able to um, take a normal pair of pliers, like if you had it out of the truck and squeeze them without any problem, because you lose some of your force through the cable and everything, I wasn't able to, with, with my hand strength, which is decent, uh, lock these all the way down to get that hose clamp off. So what I ended up having to do was take a C clamp and literally clamp the end of the pliers right here, squeeze them shut with a C clamp underneath the truck. And then fortunately, that clamp is one of the kinds that locks itself open. So I was able to squeeze it tight enough for the clamp to lock itself open. Make sure if you're gonna go that route and you're locking the clamp open that it is truly locked because I, I tried one time, I tried to take the pliers off and about two seconds after I'd gotten them off, the clamp popped back into place, or should I say popped back into place and squoze the hose again. Um, so that was a pain to have to basically redo what I had just done. But at the end of the day, I was able to get the clamp uh, opened up and then slid down right here on the, on the radiator hose. Then getting the hose off is interesting. So what I did, let me run over my toolbox really quick to show you the tool that I used, was took one of my radiator hose picks and I was able to get up in there behind the hose and kind of loosen it up. That did not get the job done, however. Um, I couldn't pull the hose off with that. The, the best I could do was start poking holes in the hose, which I didn't really care about because I wasn't reusing it. So what I ended up having to do was take a pair of hose removal pliers that are much smaller, as you can see, than the radiator hose, so they're not really intended for this purpose, but I took a pair of those pliers, got them opened up enough to get around the radiator hose just down here roughly, and basically taking a hand on each side, squoze them shut and just pulled as hard as I could and was able to get that radiator hose off. So some long range uh, hose pulling pliers, a radiator hose pick, and this specific pair of uh, hose clamp pliers, locking hose clamp pliers. Should be what you need to get this end of the hose off. I spent um, uh, not like six hours straight, but probably about six hours with a Home Depot trip in the middle to go grab a C-clamp that would fit uh, around the pliers, which I ended up using a six inch C-clamp if you're wondering. Um, probably spent six hours doing all of that just to get one end of one hose off. So at this point, the other end right here should be a piece of cake. It's just got a little uh, metal clip that you stick a screwdriver in the end of it, it kind of lifts up and lifts out and uh, unclips it from the radiator. So that one should be fairly easy. And then uh, all we have left is the upper radiator hose and the transmission line. So my goal for today is at least to get the radiator uh, out of the truck and uh, possibly get the new one in. Once it's out of the truck, I'm going to take a look and see what the clearance is for the water pump. If it makes a lot more sense for me to do the water pump with the uh, radiator out of the truck, I'm going to do that. If it doesn't really matter because there's plenty of clearance either way, then I might just drop the radiator in, get that all buttoned up, and then go for the water pump from there. But either way, we're going to make some progress today, see where we can get, and um, move forward from there. Before we move on any forward, though, I just want to show you under the truck as well a clip of what this thing looks like. So I'm going to hop under the truck and kind of point out some things there, point out where my access points were, just to help as much as I can as far as getting this lower, uh, lower hose end off. That was certainly worse than getting these off. That's probably gonna be the single worst part of this job. So let's hop under there and see what I can show you. All right, so we're here now under the truck. If you can see uh, the bolt right here, if you can see where my finger is, that's the steering rack bolt, that, that uh, rusty end of it, I'm sorry, that's the threaded nut cert basically part of it. Um, that part's on the back side of the steering rack. So we're looking from the back of the truck towards the front. Now directly up above that is where the lower radiator hose is. And you can see kind of how I have it situated right now. Spring clamp over the last uh, week or so has decided to pop itself back into place, which isn't a big deal because it's just constricting the middle of the hose right now. Um, and you can see the hose where it's released up there. And then, uh, right below the hose, you can see where the water neck is, the lower water neck, I should say. Um, I have paper towels stuffed in there just to keep everything contaminant free. But basically what you have to work with as far as room goes is reaching up through this area here with a flashlight shining and then reaching up through this area here. So what I did was run that, that cable driven hose clamp plier up through here where the flashlight is, use my hand through here to guide it. And uh, that's about all you can do. And then I, I worked the hose clamp. I actually got it loose enough to work it around 
it was situated towards the top of the hose. So I got it loose enough to work it around towards the, the side. So basically uh, right in this area here, I was able to work it around to. And then from there, I was able to get it fully uh, loosened up, locked in place and slid off and then got the hose pop free from there. So you can see very constricted, confined working area, unfortunately. Um, kind of crappy design wise, but that's what happens when you put the bigger motor in the smaller truck, I suppose. And that's that's about all there was to it. It was just a very simple task with a, a lot of struggle going with it. So you can see that's off. We should be able to take the other end of it off and pull that hose out if we want to, but I think probably I'm just gonna pull it out with the, the radiator uh, as a whole assembly. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and move forward with getting the rest of the radiator stuff loosened up and uh, getting the rest of it all pulled apart. All right, so first step I'm gonna take and actually removing the radiator is gonna be to get the upper radiator hose off. I just wanna get this out of my way. So it's it needs to be removed anyway. I'm gonna get it out of my way so we can move forward with the rest of the process. Um, most of them are gonna have spring clamps. Mine happens to have hose clamps, which I'm not gonna reuse. It's gonna either be spring or constant tension on the top here. Um, so I'm gonna get this out of the way and then we're gonna move on to getting the fuse box right here out of the way as well. All right, so got one end of the radiator hose off. Got it stuffed with paper towel. Other end is loose and it's going to come off. Never noticed, other than on the new radiator hose, I saw that the clamp was there. But this actually secures in right here on the uh, fan shroud. So you're going to need a plastic pry tool or something to pry that out. It's just a Christmas tree type clip. So you're going to want to go ahead and pry that sucker out there too. Um, and the upper radiator hose is going to come out. Now if you have a stock truck, you're also going to need to remove the intake. Uh, and maybe the, the box that's up there, the resonator box and everything. Mine's got an aftermarket intake, so no worries for me there, but uh, do whatever you need to do as far as that goes. I can't can't comment on a stock truck, so. Onward with the radiator hose removal. All right, so the next step in getting the radiator out, I need to get the fans out, and to do that, I need to get the uh, fuse box out of the way. So we've got four 10 millimeter bolts right here, and then I'm guessing there's gonna be some clips that we have to release. I can see I'm gonna have to release some of this wiring harness clippage here. There's one that's broken here that I'll probably end up retaping and fixing some of that up. Um, while I'm in here, and then it doesn't look like there's anything clipped in here. I believe there's a clip down here in between, but that may not apply because we're moving the whole box and not just uh, the box itself. We're moving the box and the harness out of the way. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get that folded forward. Once I get it folded forward, I'll show you everything that I took apart. And uh, we're going to have to get the wiring harness for the fans disconnected, which I believe is uh, it's right down here. There and there, I think that's gonna be our disconnection points. It looks like that just wraps right here straight to the fuse box. So we can get all that unplugged and unhooked. I may actually do those right now while I have easy access to them. And uh, we'll move forward with getting the shroud out. All right, so we have everything loose now, although I just clipped it back into place. But if you take a look, all the screws are out, the whole fuse box is loose, the wiring harness is unclipped here. And I'm just now realizing Oh no, power steering reservoir is bolted on here. So we're gonna need to unbolt that and it's probably just gonna slip out and move out of the way. No big deal there. Um, so gotta get that out of the way. I'm just gonna probably zip tie it up over to the intake or maybe take the center intake tube out and shove it out of the way back there. And then we should be able to flop this whole fuse box wiring harness assembly over so we can access any of the fasteners holding in the uh, fan shroud in here and then lift the fan shroud out of the truck. So I'm going to get that moved, show you where I move it to, and then we're going to move forward with taking the fan shroud out the rest of the way. All right, so as you can see, we've made some pretty good progress. Um, I have the battery cables and everything all shoved back there, the wiring harness. There were a couple extra clips, like right here, that I had to release from the fan shroud right there. Um, actually, it was that clip right there, the one right there, this one went right there, <clears throat> so on and so forth. The fuse box obviously is pushed well into the engine bay now. I released this line right here. Your clamp probably isn't going to look like this. Uh, this is a GM one that I shoved on here because um, it fits the line properly and the OEM board one was broken when I bought the truck. Um, so this is released and then you can see I took off the intake tube as well and shoved the power steering reservoir right there which is a great spot for it. Um, so the only complication that I may run into now, I have the fan shroud loose which is hard to demonstrate with one hand and standing where I am, you can see it's loose. <clears throat> the only complication I might run into is the fact that on this side, 
the wiring harness tucks really tightly between basically this aftermarket air box and the mounting ear for the shroud right here. So that may uh, pose a complication for me. I may have to pull out that air box. I really hope not. I'm going to try to finagle it out without doing that, but we're going to see how we, how far we get with that. Um, but otherwise the fan shroud's ready to come out. I'm just going to need to finagle it out from here. And if you have a stock air box, I'm guessing it's probably not as big and you're probably going to be all right as far as getting the wiring harness a little bit looser and probably out of the way is where you actually want to get it um, kind of into the engine bay like I did on this side. And then you're going to be able to pull the fan shroud up from there. So um, I don't know if I mentioned, I, I think I mentioned earlier that I was going to disconnect them. I don't know if I showed and you're not going to, be able to see the connectors down there are disconnected. There's three mounting points. One or two of mine were broken. Uh, there's going to be a lot of... Um, going through these wiring harnesses and retaping these clips or replacing these clips. Uh, luckily I have a pretty good supply of them, but I'm going to be doing a lot of that as I go through this and put everything back together. So on to pulling the fan shroud out, which is certainly going to be an off camera job, I think. All right. So I want to show this on camera because no other video or instruction that I've seen has mentioned it. I was about to get the, the shroud pulled out or everything was coming up nicely. And then all of a sudden I ran into a snag and it was on this side, which is the freer side, I thought. I was trying to figure out what in the heck was going on. So as it turns out, I can see it's pulling the wiring harness. If we move this out of the way, and I'm looking from underneath on the passenger side, there's another clip. So there's actually a clip towards the bottom side of this uh, of this shroud as well that you'll need to get from uh, up underneath the truck, ideally. Uh, that's where I'm going to get it from. But I'm going to go ahead and release that, and that should indeed be the last clip. So from that point. We should be able to yank the shroud out. But I wanted to show that on camera so you can see exactly what's going on down there if you get stuck. All right, so we now have the fan shroud completely out. As you can see, there's tons more room for activities in there. All the wiring I still have flop forward. And I think what I'm going to do before I do anything more with the radiator is take care of all of the front of the engine stuff. Because if you look, if I move this wiring box back and everything, granted this is my way from the top, I have loads of room to work in the front of the engine. So just to make my life a little easier, since it was a pain to get this thing out, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of all this stuff. So the water pump, I'm gonna replace all the pulleys, the, well, not all the pulleys, the idler pulleys and uh, the water pump pulley, obviously, with the water pump. Um, and I believe that's all I'm replacing down there. So, oh, and the tensioner, of course, too, because that's original as far as I know. Um, and the belt with all of that. So. I'm gonna do all of that stuff um, and anything else that I that I see on the front end, which I, I don't see anything so far. It looks fairly clean and everything. Um, I'm gonna do all of that. And then I'm gonna come back to the cooling system stuff and uh, the actual cooling system stuff and take care of uh, the radiator. Now that the fan shroud is out, you can see the radiator is actually not too bad to take out. It's fairly accessible. Um, I'm not 100% sure how it unclips from the core support. It looks like there's a bolt here, and there's uh, probably a bolt over here as well. Yes, there is, but I'm going to end up taking that out. We're cover, we'll cover the trans cooler lines once we get there, because that goes to the radiator, and uh, move forward from there. So onward to front of the engine stuff.